randomly today i caught up on a bit of the podcast drama going on at the moment there's some pod wars happening and unfortunately they're happening between two podcasts that i kind of used to listen to or one in particular i used to listen to religiously and that was the joe budden podcast they're having a little bit of a tip or tat because some time ago joe budden split up with his original kind of crewmates in rory or more and they went off to do their own podcast called new rory or more and ever since then there's been a lot of bad blood between them for various reasons but i guess at the crux of it is basically they had a falling out about money about ownership about maybe credit and just maybe feeling like as if they had some level yeah maybe of ownership is probably the best way to go about it because the epic sort of thing to come out of that argument was there was an occasion where Joe was arguing with more one of his former co-hosts and people that kind of helped to you know make that Joe Budden podcast what it is and he said something along the lines of the podcast business is none of your business to more which you can understand if you're somebody who really legitimately feels like you played a big role in getting that show where it was it could be something that could kind of hurt you especially when it's coming from somebody you consider a friend a brother and whatnot and for whatever reason Joe wanted to make it very clear that he doesn't care about friendship when it comes to business whatever's on the papers on the paper he dealt with it the way he wants to deal with it and for myself being a big fan of the pod and kind of believing all the propaganda and all the kind of myths and narratives people put out about themselves as a fan I kind of took it a little bit I took it badly which is which means I kind of didn't listen to any of their shows after the fact I kind of tried to champion New Warrior more but I kind of got bored of their show I tried to listen to Joe Budden podcast but then I kind of got annoyed hearing Joe Budden's voice because it reminded me that he kind of you know basically you know um in a weird way kind of you know effed over his flipping friends and I couldn't never you know I couldn't really hear or see him the same again so in actuality it kind of damaged I think both shows but they've been throwing shots at each other continuously for the last I feel like few months um every single time it usually feels like Mo was the one that's probably most offended because he was basically more of Joe's friend and kind of Rory came along later on down the line they were still obviously all close friends but Mo definitely has known Joe longer so maybe he kind of feels it way more anyway they've been having a tit for tat and it's been quite funny to listen to so I'm going to play a couple of the clips here courtesy of Chicks Move here on youtube so definitely check out his channel because he's the one who updates all of this stuff and prepares all the clips and does it really really well chicks moves on youtube so i'm going to play a couple of the clips that feature some of the back and forth between these guys it's been absolutely incredible so let's just well i think incredible in terms of funny so let's kind of play the clip and see what he has to say and what happened oh and just to begin with this by the way to give you some context this whole argument started because of the flipping complex end of year list those end of year lists honestly they do more damage than good to the culture everyone always kind of falls out and argues over these flipping um power ranking end of year type of list type of things um joe obviously started feeling himself about the list um new rory or more then got on their podcast and discussed the list and when they got to the number one they had to discuss their former boss and friend and employer and co-host joe budden so let's see what they have to say let me skip ahead a little bit here they want to waste my time Skip ahead a little bit, bro. Time and energy words. on a very biased list, and a list that was put together by Come on, a complex it. employees. That's people. Let's load this. Why is it doing this? There you go. It's playing now. Don't academics came in at number two, and Charlemagne was number three. Now Rory and Moore was not on this list. If you guys ask me, I know some of you guys do not like Rory and Moore. I personally feel like they should have been there somewhere in the 20 to 25 range. They went through this list on their Patreon. You guys can go check it out. I thought it was interesting what they had to say about Joe Budden being number one. Here's what they said. Oh, of course. Look at that. <sighs> the <But> thief. <laughs> the cat burglar. <laughs> <laughs> big, big integrity. <laughs> Big, big tech. tech? Oh, big tech. <laughs> look at the cat the burglar. The one who punch a big, big tech. tech. Look at the cat burglar. Look and look, staring off into the next house he wants to run in. Uh, <laughs> big cat. That's big cat. Is that a Miri? Quiet as a mouse. I believe that this person belongs in the, in the top five. So I, I, yeah. I'm not mad at them being Whoa. number one. Look Again, how short I'm his keeping brief my non bias the way I have this entire time. I didn't want to defend Adam 22, nor do I want to defend this gentleman. Why but he they, should be in the top five. Why yeah. didn't they put a write up on him? Yeah, they barely give him anything. And that's based off what hip hop media is now. For more on the So I'm not sure if I'm giving a compliment right <laughs> now by saying I think these people should be in the top five. Ex rapper to punting career path. Wow. The most abrasive I think commentator that in hip hop. I think the men another up. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, this could be the rollout for bringing the show back. Yeah. 
<laughs> one-two punch. One. And you don't want there too. You want to join Carisha? <laughs> nah, she she belongs in number seven. No, we not gonna do that. <laughs> no, wait. I'm jacking Carisha. You can't seven. jack. She's a bubble seed. Yeah, I'm jacking that. That's a great spot for her to land. She's at. a Cinderella that gets to the final four. Lucky number seven. That's a good number. That's a good number. Like you know what I mean? I'm this list it. is absolute insanity. Yeah, yeah that's terrible. Oh my god. I think that's what they the want. integrity cracks at like number two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <right? laughs> they got rid of it immediately. Yeah. They let you know right there. Like, all right, we threw all that shit out the window that we said we was about with this list. It's not real. It doesn't exist. Yo, but go back to the, the criteria bar. again. That was a bar, right? Yeah. It was great. What was a bar? <laughs> Obviously, they were going to have Joe. So you heard that. And then, of course, Joe went back and fired back at them. I thought his reply was quite funny also. Let me play that. And you won't just be looking to take the next check from somewhere. To whom this may concern, this is not even <laughs> on page one of the manual. This is a thing. I don't like the guy and I don't listen to his content anymore. He gets on my nerves and stuff and he's clearly extremely toxic and has a pattern of falling out with all of his friends when it comes to business and just falling out with people overall and does none of the work to kind of repair that relationship or those relationships or to basically work on himself so it doesn't happen again. It's just what he is in it. It's just, you know, he's always going to keep keep that keep that flipping um, same circle of nonsense happening again and again but one thing you can't deny about joe he's flipping entertaining isn't he to whom it may concern like why not just say the guy's name why all this nonsense why all this like why all this bloviating why all this flipping pompous nonsense just say the people's names who you're talking about we know who you're talking about guy because you niggas ain't in the bookstore <laughs> Instead of critiquing people's placement on this list, we need more critiquing on why you're not on it. Fair. To everyone not on it, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> There's some steps that you niggas have missed. <laughs> to whom it may concern. Stop holding the microphone. <laughs> like if I'm just giving out podcast advice, it's certain niggas, y'all can't speak to me. Y'all didn't do the work yet. You didn't go in the bookstore. Hire the editors. Lows. Get people to help. So Invest in the staff. So Pay the staff. Get more staff. Like he said stuff. When people say stuff like this, it makes no sense, isn't it, right? Stop holding the mic. To be fair, the holding the mic thing meme could be just a, a same. The same thing could be applied to him shouting at an empty chair when he fires his close friends from a podcast they helped build together. But then he now, you know, becomes you know flipping tyrant man and decides to flipping kick kick them all off because they're dead to ask about the accounting or they want a better idea about where the money is going that they're flipping investing into it or just how they're going to get paid. Regardless of how you think the cookie crumbles on this and who was right or wrong, I find that meme pretty funny. To be fair, him talking about them holding the mics and then basically digging at him for being a 44 year old man who was screaming at some empty chairs and couldn't just call his friends and sort it out like an adult stop check chasing stop doing the bare minimum mm. and expecting that to yield results <laughs> you niggas are the bare minimum boys <laughs> <laughs> you niggas get that bag put it in your pocket and do the bare minimum I don't want to hear none of you niggas talk about nobody in here. Hey, to whom it may concern. Because niggas... Again, to be fair to Joe, to be fair to Joe, he has done quite well in investing the money back into the pod to kind of make it better. Like, I think everybody can agree, and myself included, even though I don't listen to the pod anymore, and I've, you know, kind of turned off of Joe Budden ever since the breakup. But we can't we can't argue with the fact that the Joe Budden podcast legitimately is the best sounding podcast i've ever heard in terms of audio wise like parks is a little bit of a cuck for joe budden but let's not deny also he's a hell of an engineer his cv is extensive just do your googles about what he's done and how he's contributed to hip-hop overall but the way that he audio engineers that flipping podcast it sounds amazing incredible through your ears it legitimately is one of the best produced podcasts out there legit and especially when they're combining the video stuff, the live streaming they'll be doing. I've been seeing clips of that. That looks pretty cool. It's, it does it pretty well. But I also think it's interesting that he's mentioning a few times the issue about money. Because if you're not aware, when these guys broke up with Joe, 
they then went on to kind of do their own podcast and through just you know how flipping you know the universe is a flipping cruel mistress um somehow they ended up landing a deal where they basically got paid allegedly somewhere in the region of 10 million dollars for a pod for their podcast essentially to join a network or not to join a particular network or, i don't know whatever it may be network or service whatever it may be somebody paid them 10 million dollars or something around that kind of mark and obviously the whole if you believe the narrative that they fell out initially because of money and Joe basically thinking that he's worth a certain amount and he didn't get it and the beef about the Spotify deal and the accounting for the guys that he basically said weren't contributing much or didn't bring much to the table and that's why he didn't feel like they were deserving of certain things and he felt like he was a boss for them to go on and get a 10 million dollar deal that kind of would sting you to think a little bit especially when you don't have your deal yourself or you're holding out for a particular number so him mentioning it a couple of times feels like it still stings him, even though he thinks, even though I'm sure he believes they do the bare minimum and it could be doing way more to improve the quality of the show. But I still think the fact that they got the money doing the bare minimum is what's really kind of, you know, got, got him hot and bothered if you're Joe Budden. Because he's like, how are these guys really bad at what they do? I'm the one, quote unquote, giving it up. I'm the one creating content, trying to be viral, you know, saying, you know, crazy stuff and providing outlandish hot takes episode of the episode just in the order to kind of jump on that algorithm and whatnot. And these guys are doing the quote unquote bare minimum and they get in the bag. That's why I think the problem kind of lies. But again, another reply. So he said that and then Rory and Moore obviously had to flip and spin the block and reply back to him. Here's what they said when he declared them to be the bare minimum boys. Some people sounding smart. People good weekend dumb. though. Yeah, good weekend. Uh, felt good. It was good, good weather for the most part, you know. I'll make this actually quick and brief because I I know there's a lot of people that are here just for the other response. Let's dead the narratives that were happening this weekend. I'm not even talking about them over there. Just the narratives that exist. Outside of maybe two or three jokes since we put our a response video out two years ago, I have not said a fucking word. Mo has. Matter of fact, if anything, I've been objective and complimentary in a lot of places. Mo if hasn't. you look at that clip, I even said you deserve to be on that fucking list. Mo oh, hasn't. By the way, I'm talking to Joe. Hey. I don't do this who we made concern bullshit and hey. subs. You're fucking 45. Talk to people. Hey. Don't bleep my name anymore on the podcast. Shut the fuck up. I told you the last time I saw you, leave me alone. Oof. And I have not said a fucking word. I've been oh. nothing but kind, polite. Anytime someone brings you up publicly, I don't say bad words. Stop talking about me. Oh. Leave me the fuck up alone it's getting obsessive this is his third press run in two years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this last one his whole press run was trying to tell people that he does not talk about us your press run was talking about us saying you don't talk about us you just went on your third <laughs> press run in two years i have not been on one press run talking about your ass i did my response video and i left it the fuck alone you did I didn't. <laughs> no, I was like, I didn't. <laughs> Don't talk about lists, right? <laughs> you should shut the fuck up if you're not on the list to talk about a list, right? You know what's funny about the list, though? Just to, just to touch on the list stuff. It's funny because there was a time where Joe would get annoyed at not being on certain lists and it would create viral content and it would be like a good topic for discussion on the pod and it has some good back and forth. Lists are just so toxic. Now he's on the list and he's number one. He still finds a way to be upset in some way. What an incredible good dude, isn't it? What an incredible, incredible dude. I absolutely love it. What an incredible, incredible dude. Your YouTube popped from you talking about a list you weren't on. And we know how that ended. My arms are just tired. <laughs> I, need, I need a mic stand. <laughs> like, I don't know about you, but like... Yes, we have mic stands, but I like mm -hmm. I think we need more mic stands. We know we need like ten more mics. Yeah, no, I understand. Just, just no, no, I am sin. I I I agree with you, I am sin, and I think I'm that's my kind of roundup point in this. And you're right. I am sin says they're mediocre and there is no life to the podcast. We don't know anything that's going on. It's all in the air. Rory and Mo needed that this Joe keeps giving them shine. He should just stop. I personally dislike Joe Budden, but that man pods like he really goes in. Yeah, for sure. I dislike the guy too because, again, it's my fault. It's not anything to do with him. I just dislike him because I bought into the narrative or I bought into the gas or I bought into the perception that he was for the creators, right? And he was going to do this thing where 
he was this rapper who didn't get enough accl- who didn't get the acclaim he maybe his talent deserved when he was rapping he was always overlooked always the groom and never the bride i don't know whether that term is right always a bride always a bridesmaid and never the bride whatever it may be and then he finally gets on the podcast thing and it becomes a thing that kind of blows up for him he then becomes an important person in culture people want to go to him he has really good hot takes the podcast is fun it provides free three hour plus you know amazing content that you can kind of listen to two times a week plus whatever they do on patreon amazing 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 but just the idea that i bought into how he was presenting himself is what kind of turned me off and i'm just the kind of person where if i don't like you as a human being it's very difficult for me to like your content and listen to it i won't, i'm not going to make a kick and a fuss about it. i'm not going to write articles about it or try and counsel you i just will stop listening so i stopped listening to it cool but let's also be real the guy's a fucking podcaster he can podcast really well he's really good at ranting and raving giving you know unnecessary over the top hot takes inserting himself in drama creating a drama and just generally being a funny dude on podcasts he does it really really well no one can deny that and one thing we can't deny also even if we're fans of new rory and more the podcast is boring bro compared to joe budden podcast is boring but also joe budden's annoying and the other guests on the or the other hosts on his show aren't that great so if anything both pods both groups of people have suffered rory and more need joe joe needs rory and more that's the actual unfortunate truth of it they've both been able to succeed you know without each other now they've both basically proved that they can do it but they need each other both of them need each other to create a best podcast that's what actually makes it great but unfortunately that that boat has now sailed you know too much messy stuff has been said and me personally i'm the type of person especially if i was your friend and you're saying this stuff about me in public if i see you in real life it's on site like we're gonna throw hands i may lose right it may end up embarrassing but we're gonna be punching up each other and it's never gonna go back to normal again it's kind of over but for sure they've basically lost out both sides of it because i feel like the pod was way stronger when they were together now they're separate both been diluted they both got their good parts both got their wrong parts but overall that guy, that guy joe budden knows how to podcast let's not lie about that but he's kind of a bit of a you know insufferable guy to sort of kind of listen to which maybe is a quintessential ingredient of being a good podcaster you kind of have to be a little bit insufferable i think of the guy chris black on, on the flipping how long gone podcast i like he's incredibly insufferable and somewhat unlikable but the podcast is flames i listen to it every fucking week it drops three times a week i don't miss a pod unless the guest is super annoying so maybe that's part of the reason why certain shows work why certain shows don't work you kind of have to be a bit a little bit annoying a little bit hard to kind of like and then people will tune in to kind of hate listen and then maybe you can turn them over to be fans who knows anyway going back to the response just get a few more mics to end in here should have kept your library card yeah that's that's what i should have did uh, but uh i'm glad you i'm glad you addressed that no it's not even like i, and just, I, I may even sound <clears throat> frustrated and upset and i'm totally cool with sounding that way because i really have been quiet about this entire shit that's what's making it even cornier like this started it should it should have just been said no i have it should have just been honest said no i have felt frustrated and upset because i do feel frustrated and upset joe was my friend at one point we were really good friends we built this um, which i thought at the time we were really good friends we built and this amazing podcast that really changed all of our lives and I really thought we had the opportunity to really kind of rewrite the kind of narrative or the playbook on how people do business in this industry and really kind of do good by each other and actually grow this into a bigger thing, a, multi- a multimedia thing, a whatever thing, whatever it may be. And it hurt when my friend who I consider the best friend or somebody I consider very close essentially kind of didn't do right by me business wise and it ended. You should have been honest and said that, which is why I'm replying the way that I am. That would have made it more thing because the one thing you can't say about Joe is that he didn't really ab- approach them in the most um, compassionate way when they kind of aired their grievances. He immediately went into defense mode, immediately started attacking them and went into kind of, I don't know you type of stuff and said some crazy shit. So maybe being vulnerable and saying, yeah, you actually did hurt me the way you treated me. And that's why I kind of take this a bit more personal than some things I did. And this is the way it is. But hey, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Yelling at an empty chair. <laughs> <laughs> that I shouldn't come to your son's birth after there's a full episode of you talking about how much that meant to you. One story has not changed at all. One continues to change. I never took it personal. I never said wild shit. I never even went in on your business. 
I left it alone after that response video. So leave me the fuck alone. And had, had we not spoken about that, we would have been hating. That's where you now can't that, win. Now that we spoke about it, we hating. I don't hate nobody. I don't pay attention to niggas enough to hate niggas. <laughs> you just got to be honest, too. If you hate somebody, too, just say you hate them. This whole I don't hate people, I don't say. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. These guys clearly do hate him, too. I'm sure it's better now because they've got a $10 million deal. They're thriving, doing their own thing. They've created their own little ecosystem and kind of, you know, fan base. You know, they sold out their tour, did really well on it. I was meant to go to the one in London, but I kind of got lazy and didn't go. They're doing pretty well, both camps. But let's, 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 let's be honest. You hate him. It's okay to hate him. Like, that's, the, that's why I hate when I get dragged, drug into this shit. Because it's like, I don't care about none of these dudes, man. Respect and love to all of y'all. I'm just saying facts are facts. That's honest, it. Let's deal with the facts. But we're not mad. Rory and I are happy. Our staff is happy. Everybody's having a great time. <laughs> we have mic stands. <laughs> we have mic stands. It. We I have equipment. It. Like, I don't want people to think that we don't have these. These are all like false, just moving the goalpost shit. Like, cut it out, man, with the bullshit. Stop, bro. You're not the nigga that know. You're not the fucking the 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 master of podcasting. I know niggas you call you the podfather and you let that shit circle jerk you and you came that on yourself. Combat no. Combat Jack yeah, called like, himself that and then he passed away and then Pause. you started. Yeah, like stop you it with that, that bullshit, Pause. man. Cut it out. It's corny, bro. Like it's no this is corny. I gotta take seven showers a day now because my name is next to yours in the mud. Jesus Christ. Like, you know what I mean? I don't wanna do this shit, man. Like, look what y'all got me. Don't I remember a rapper saying that? I had to take 17 showers. Who said that? Was it Big Sean? Some rapper said that about somebody. Was it Big Sean said that about one of that girl that that unfortunately died in the in um in that pool? I think she may have um self expired herself. I think some rapper said that about somebody. Like I had to take 17 showers. Something really grim. I was like, whoa, about the about their girl no i think it was i think it was kanye it might have been kanye kanye may have said that about amber rose like something about showers or something i remember that line what are you doing the same thing i said to joe and everyone else leave me alone don't talk about me i don't talk about y'all leave me the fuck alone i know we're creating content people of pod wars all this shit i'm talking just to y'all in real life it just happens to be on a fucking podcast this is not a war or a back and forth yeah big up shut up I'm going to shut up and we can all move the fuck on and do whatever we want with our lives. Let the <laughs> fans talk all day. But y'all, <laughs> shut up. Shut up. I'm going to do the same. Shut up. My, my arm is still tired. <laughs> wow, Rory sounds really angry, really, really shaky. Right? Really angry, really shaky, clearly. You know, again, this is personal. It touches them because they were all good friends at once. I just don't know why they're pretending like they weren't close friends and that it doesn't, they're not bothered. I'm not hating. No, you can't hate your best friend now that's now turned enemy because you were once best friends and you didn't ever envision a time when you weren't going to be friends anymore, especially in the way that it ended. It's, it's fine to be upset about it. Anyway, finally, Joe then decides to respond and kind of ethered them, to be fair. As much as I don't like Joe... He absolutely destroyed <laughs> Rory and Moore in this response. And I hope it kind of ends now because it's kind of getting corny, kind of getting lame. But this response is brutal at the end. This is Joe Budden essentially eviscerating these guys. So, <laughs> if y'all think I ain't getting my money's worth <laughs> out of this, now that I'm prepared, I'm prepared. But I'm not dissing nobody. I felt like last part when I was speaking about just podcasting and the landscape in general, a lot of podcasters out there were able to pull from that and get help from that. Now, hit dogs holler <laughs> and hit man holler and ho hey, big up. Kanye said it on Breakfast Club about Amber Kim. Oh yeah, that's it. That's the one. Yeah, big up Natashki and, and um, Green Ghost Media. Big up Green Ghost Media. Thank you for the two twenty super chat. I appreciate you. Yeah, that was Kanye. Yeah, I remembered it because I remember that being like a really mean thing. Kanye is a really, really sly, mean general. By the way, very sly, mean general. I remember once because he says a lot of mean stuff, considering how emotionally fragile and mentally fragile he is in general, and how just sensitive he is. Right, he seems to get very butthurt about the things people say about him but he actually is very mean to people remember when he said to Wiz Khalifa cool pants right that kind of was a meme 
that he was getting ripped to shreds about because at that time Wiz Khalifa was known for having his t-shirt off and wearing jazzy pants right um and then he said that stuff about Amber he then well, obviously um saying what you call it I'd take a million showers after you before I got to Kim then he said the thing about Kim's mum calling her Chris Jong-un that was absolutely crazy and then what else he said really really mean oh he said something about Big Sean and he's oh yeah Big Sean during the drinks champ stuff basically basically calling him washed and no one's bumping your stuff in the club and we don't rate you your album suck like just crazy shit like sh kanye is very mean a sly mean girl but anyway let's continue joe budden eviscerating rory and his response I'll, I'll if you count <laughs> Paul, if you hear me but, but rule. if if it don't apply <laughs> if it don't apply you kind of just let that shit fly you just let it fly i want to take this time to clear some things up really quickly and we'll move on. Uh, I want to define the term press run because we're largely responsible with introducing it and y'all using it wrong. Uh-oh. <sighs> uh -oh. A press run, a press run is when you set up a string of press for the purpose of promoting something. Introducing a product. You have to have something to promote. If you just pop up somewhere, that's not a press run. And Bear has been saying that for some time now. I totally disagree with that. <laughs> Did you catch that? He started calling Rory Bear because they're the bare minimum boys. Get it? Rory's Bear, Mole's minimum. Hilarious. Bear. <laughs> Who's Bear? Who's <laughs> Bear, you are mistaken. In that. <laughs> oh. When I show up to these platforms, I, these people just are thrilled to have me. I'm not there promoting something, and I certainly wouldn't be there to just pr promote you. Bear, you are wrong in that. And I'm not your enemy. I'm not the enemy for once. I ain't spoke to niggas in years. Actually, you about to make me go in there. I saw it. You about to make me go in there. You make me mad now. Yeah, I'm not anybody's enemy. I ain't spoke to nobody in years. I'm just offering constructive criticism by watching and just seeing what's going on. Now, one of the last times that I saw a bear, <laughs> <laughs> we met up over there at Onview, and he needed a ride to his car. So he got in my car and I was driving to the garage and he said, hey man, you know we got close to that 10 million, right? <laughs> I mean, we didn't get that 10, but we got close. And I just nodded my head, all right, Bear. Like, why are you even telling me? It's none of my business. And he said, because I feel like I want you to know. And I said, all right, well, you're lying. And he said, how do you know? I said, because you're set. <laughs> mm. Not a $10 million set. <laughs> and then shortly after that, we stopped speaking, and then y'all wasn't at the set no more. <laughs> and I'll admit, I want to know why. He's so observant and so petty. That's really, really funny. But if you do watch the new Rory and Moore show, you would know the video um, portion of the show. They were recording it at one point at this set. I think they're signed again. I don't know their business too tough, but I think they may be signed to like Sirius or something. One of those kind of platforms, right? And they got basically, allegedly got somewhere right in the region of 10 million and they got loads of press written about it. They were in Deadline Variety, all that good stuff. So it was a legit offer. It was a legit deal. They got signed. I, th I don't know what number of years it was, whatever it may be. But I guess part of the deal was that they filmed this really cool set. And for whatever reason, the set kind of went away. At the time, they said it was because Rory's dog, dog was pissing and shitting all over the place because I think he got that dog new. Or it was a, you know, whatever. It was, a, it was a pup at the time. So that made sense at the time to me. And also, once they switched back, once they switched temporarily to doing it at Rory's place or his new gaff, me, myself included, and other people that are fans of the show would say, I left a comment a couple of times saying, the show is much better than he's filming it at home. It just had a nicer vibe. It just felt warmer. They had their socks off. They were chilling. 
You know, just, I don't know, just something relax about it. Maybe there is something to be said for going to a studio and kind of clocking in and clocking out. There is something about that. I think some people kind of have that, some have that kind of way of kind of working. I know Eminem does that when he records music. Eminem is a kind of nine to five guy, they say, right? Where he turns up at nine and leaves at five. If you don't come into the studio between those hours, you have to just come the next day. He kind of treats you like he's going to the office. So maybe there is something to be said about going to a studio, turning on the mics, and then kind of turning up and be like, okay, cool, we're in podcast time. Let's give it up. Let's be the flipping content boys. But I also think it's not fair to do that to New Rory and Moore and their show because I feel like their show, even though I say it's boring sometimes, the reason why it's boring is because they purposely don't want to do that. They clearly want to be chill, relax, talk about what they want to talk about and just kick it. And that's what they do. They don't want to quote unquote give it up all the time and be looking for and be flipping hot tech McGee out here, which is what Joe Budden and a few of these other guys do, where they just try to create hot takes for the sake of creating hot takes, just because it's quote unquote their job. It's not really, you know what I mean? You've got podcasts should we allow you to talk about what you want to talk about? So I don't know. I just, I just think, I just think in general it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird to kind of, you know, come, you know, have that kind of stipulation on them. But I also think it's hilarious how he's pointing out these type of things that we all kind of noticed but didn't really say in a negative way. But of course, Joe is going to say it in a negative way. <laughs> you see what you start? <laughs> Yo, why are you blaming me? This is just about to go bad. Go ahead. No, they ain't, I ain't That's saying nothing wrong. I know. You have a way of not saying anything I'm talking wrong, to though. podcasters because the, because Bear and Minimum have done nothing but put on a master class <laughs> to put on a master class and how to lose fucking value. So I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to future podcasters to learn from your mistakes. <laughs> So I wanted to know why y'all left that, <laughs> why y'all left that little studio. Stop, no, damn. Yo, let me say this real quick. And you ended up in y'all, in y'all oh, house. Shit. So then you started recording next to a graveyard, and I took a moment to laugh because I love when God and me see eye to eye on things. <laughs> but it's a little bit low for him to talk about God. Joe has scummed over and fucked over a lot of people. If anybody's owed some sort of karmic retribution, it'll be him. If anything, he's also gotten away with a lot. Because of, you know, the content game, he's got his own fan base, you can kind of be uncancelable. But to say that that's God's way of kind of, hey, big up Green Ghost Media. Rory and Mal at home feels like classic JBP at parks. Exactly. Big up Green Ghost Media for the 220 um, super chat. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely, you're right. And um, I don't think it's a bad thing. that They switched it to the home for whatever reason, and it works. I don't really have an issue with it. Um, the main issue people are having with the new Rory and Moore show is that it's allegedly boring. I'm saying it's boring just because I don't like what they talk about sometimes, but I don't think it's boring in terms of the way they're approaching it. They decided they don't want to be hot tech McGee's. They don't want to get on there and gossip and talk about shade room stuff and, you know, um, speculate about things like other places do, like No Jumper and all these sort of places and whatnot. They want to just like talk about cool shit, talk about stuff that they're into and just kick it. And for the most part, it does that job well. I don't think it's a crime if you don't want to be a chatty patty. But, you know, when, when the top guys in that list of the hip hop power rankings, essentially, if I think about it, I think the top five people are all extreme chatty patties in their own way. So I guess because of that, they think to be a good podcast and to be in, in that kind of community and that kind of culture and that kind of scene of hip hop, you had to kind of have to be the one who wants to talk about mess, who wants to continue to talk about Crescian rock and flipping blue face and what's Diddy doing and what Drake meant here and what Ye said here and what Jake, like it's just nonsense, nonsense. There needs to be a show that exists within the hip hop landscape that there needs to be shows that exist that just talk about the music that just break down albums actually and break down songs, talk about singles they like, talk about what direction the artist went in and didn't go in, about music videos in general and what their mindset might have been when they put the project together. And it should be shows that talk about the gossip and the nonsense stuff and the ratchet stuff. And it should be shows just, you know, a kind of good background listen. And I think New Rory and Moore is a good background listen, but Joe's going to say what he's going to say. Anyway, let's end this bit and we can move on. This is the last few bits of Joe destroying them. But the problem with that is... <clears throat> I said to myself, now wait a goddamn second. All right. Oh, the nigga said, uh, well, we're not in the building no more because they didn't like how the dog was acting around here. And I said, that ah, sounds familiar. But then I scratched my head. I said, wait a minute, Bear. 
You mean to tell me that these niggas gave you $10 million? This is funny. And said, <laughs> hey, your dog can't come up here no more. <laughs> and you stayed home with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the? F- <laughs> He really should do stand up. This is one person who actually should do stand up. That was a legitimately good joke. I didn't know he was going there with this, guys. Ouch. That was kind of petty. Anyway, cool. He did that, right? So it is what it is. In the end, just to conclude it all, I honestly do think both shows, both, as Brendan Shaw would say, have suffered. Both shows have suffered. And I think both shows would contribute from both camps of people being friends again and reuniting because the joe budden podcast even though joe was able to kind of bounce back from having his best friends and co-hosts you know basically kick rocks and he fired one and the other one left and it was all kind of messy he was able to kind of bounce back and kind of fill the seat slots in with the other guys who are kind of keeping it going i don't listen to it anymore i've listened to a single full show since the breakup since the last time we started running to a chair i kind of just you know timed out of it new warrior might listen to here and there but Joe's got to be given credit for, you know, basically bouncing back and allowing the show to be successful and whatnot and not allowing it, making sure it was still successful. And the new Rory and Moore guys, Rory and Moore have to be given credit too because everybody kind of counted them out, myself included, thought that they needed Joe in order to survive out here, but they were able to prove that they can do it on their own. They went out, secured a bag, sold out shows, have their own community of fans that love what they do, and it's smashing, and it works really well for them. So big up all of those guys, considering. But I would prefer if they kind of came back together and just made a show, because I think separately, they're not the guys that they once were, in my opinion. But hey, what do I know? What do I know?